Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to Straight Talk Bible Study with No Chaser. I'm Pastor Steve Dennis of the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, where Jesus is Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the one that said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. <clears throat> that is the God that we serve. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. I hope you had a wonderful day today. Um, I pray that it was a great day for you and, and I pray that everything went well for you. And as I always say, if it doesn't, if it didn't, then you have tomorrow. Amen. You have tomorrow. So, but listen, I won't be long and I know I always say that, but I wind up being long, but I'd still keep it within an hour. Uh, but, um, but I definitely want to just give you something that's very practical that I think you can use for um, for the rest of the week, you can use it for next week, and you can even use it for the rest of your life. You know, the Word of God is very good because it's, it's, from, a, it's from someone that have already understood, before you were even born, he has already understood what you're going to deal with in life. That old neighbor that you had a run-in with, he already knew that. Uh, those uh, co-workers that you can barely put up with and you just thinking about quitting your job or whatever, he's already got that covered. This, the Word of God, it handles, it deals with every part of your life because God already knows what you're going through, what you've been through and what you're going to go through. That's why he's already made a way of escape. Amen. So this word, I think, is going to be great for you because it's going to prepare you for what's upcoming now. Amen. Or what's upcoming next. Amen. But before we get into this word, let's can we have a word of prayer? OK. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you once again for this day. This is the day that you have made. God, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you, Lord, that the devil is bound and under our feet, God. We declare in Jesus' name that we got the victory. We are not the victim, but we are the victors. We declare that no matter what we had to go through today to get to this time right here, we declare that we made it, and that's a clear sign that God is still working with us. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the power to bind and to loose in Jesus name. We thank you for this. Now, Father, we, I pray that you would let the words of my mouth, God, uh, hit the hearts of your people, God. Father, I pray that it won't fall on bad grounds, but it'll fall on good grounds. It'll fall and, and, and take root and, and just produce a harvest, God. Father, I declare in Jesus name that, uh, that we won't just be hearers of your word, but we'll be doers as well. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Listen, before we get started, share this. Uh, hit somebody up, you know, text them, whatever. Tell them, hey, Pastor Dennis got a word tonight. You got to tune in. Amen. And if they're not on the list or they're not friends of mine, then it's all right. Just go ahead. And, and I think you can still tune in. Um, uh, also, you if you have any like smart devices that you're watching this uh, this program on, if you have a smart TV, uh, you may have a casting uh, app on there where you can you don't have to look at the little bitty screen that you have, but you can also cast it onto your TV that's on the wall or on the stand or whatever. If you have that, if you don't have it, you can go into your apps and you can find it, and uh, that way you can um, you can watch it on a bigger screen. Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into the word tonight. I think it's going to really, really bless you. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you turn to the book of Proverbs and I want to look, I want to start at verse chapter, uh, let's say chapter four. That's Proverbs chapter four. And I want to read, start somewhere around the 20th verse. That's Proverbs chapter four and verse 20. And we're going to start there and we're going to read probably maybe up to 27. Amen. If you're not there yet, there it is on the screen. And mine, mine is going to read a little different than yours, but it means the same thing. Amen. The Bible says in all you're getting, get an understanding. I think you'll get an understanding. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Verse 21 says, Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Verse 22 says, For they are life 
unto those that find it. That lets you know that you got to search. You got to go after it. It's not going to fall in your lap. And it's health to all your flesh. Verse 23, verse 23 says, keep thine heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence to protect it, take care of it. For out of it, out of your heart, are the issues of life. Verse 24 says, put away from thee a foul mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Verse 25 says, let thine, ear, let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Verse 26, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. And last but not least, verse 27 says, turn not to the right hand nor the left hand. Remove thy foot from evil. I want to look at verse, I want to read to you verse 23. It says, keep thine heart with all diligence. Tonight, I want to talk to you on this topic here. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Hit somebody up, text them, tell them, hey, this is going to be a good word. Pastor Dennis is preaching this word. He's teaching this word tonight. He's breaking it down. I always wanted to know what that scripture meant when it says, guard thy heart. I always wonder where that scripture was. Guard thy heart. I always heard of it, but I'd never seen it. Well, tonight we're going to talk about guarding your heart, guarding your heart, because out of it flows the issues of life. Church, in this time that we live in, we got to be careful what we see. We got to be careful what we hear because there are the two main gateways. Now, they are not the only gateways, but the two main gates that lead to your heart is going to be your eye gate and your ear gate. I'll say that again. The two main, not the only ones, but the main entrances to your heart is going to be your eye gate and your ear gate. The reason that those are the two main gates is because there are going to be some things in your life that you are going to see and you've already seen that got into your heart and you wonder why you're acting like you're acting. There are going to be some things or already have been things that is going to get into your ears and you wonder why you talk like you talk because we have not guarded our hearts and watch this. He says that he says, here's how to guard it diligently, diligently, responsibly. We've got to take time out to listen to what we should listen to and not listen to what we shouldn't listen to. We've got to learn how to look at what we should be looking at Amen. Look at what we should be looking at and not what we shouldn't be looking at, because what you see is going to eventually get into your heart. What you hear is going to eventually get into your heart. So once that the Bible says this, once that heart has been filled, then it's going to overflow. And once it starts to overflow, it's going to you're going to start saying things that you never said before. You're going to start doing things that you never did before. So you've got to guard your heart. Watch the things that goes in your eyes and the things that goes in your ears. Because once you say it or once it's been said to you or once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. So you've got to be careful about the things that gets into your heart. Amen. You got to get you got to be careful. You got to be careful. See, that's a reason I'm a little bit off of my subject here, but I mean, off of the notes here. But I'm just feeling led of the Lord to say this. You got to be careful, especially as parents, because as parents of children, you are responsible for those children and what they hear and what they see. 
All right. Let me see if I can bring it home a little bit more. You've got to be careful of all those uncles that you brought in from Ohio that says this is your uncle, baby, because after a while, that child's heart's going to get filled. I know y'all y'all laughing about that right now, but people do that. They do that. Baby, this your uncle. Mm -hmm. This your uncle from uh, Tennessee. No, you got to be careful at what your children see and what your children hear, because later on, their little bitty hearts are going to be filled and it's going to be filled with stuff that shouldn't be in there. Once the child gets old enough, next thing you know, she that child's going to be having little uncles and, and, and people coming in from out of town and they just stay in overnight. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. Be careful what your children see and what your children hear. Can I just be honest with you for a minute? Can I? Y'all don't judge me. Don't judge me because y'all done y'all done done worse worse than that. Let me share something with you. Don't judge me. But listen, when I was dating, I didn't let my children see who I was dating unless I was sure about this is one that I wanted to to marry. I didn't because I didn't. First of all, I didn't know. And then quit looking at me that way. I said I said I was being honest with you now. OK. And then if I dated someone else. They, if that one wasn't the one and I dated another one, then, you know, I wasn't sure if that was the one. So I didn't introduce them to my kids. Amen. So watch this. If I had, there would have been some things that would have gotten into their spirit, making them feel as if they can just have whatever, just run all rampage and everything and this and that. Listen, you've got to be careful. So once I found out who she was going to be, then that's when I introduced my daughter to her. That's when I introduced my son to her. Amen. Uh, because you got to be careful. Some things, it doesn't, it's not bad. I mean, it's not wrong, but you got to be sure when you do it. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. You got to be careful when uh, of, of letting your children see and hear certain things. See, I, I share another thing with you and I'll move on. I didn't let my children go and spend the night with any and everybody. Because mm -hmm. even though I may have trusted this person, but who does that person trust? You understand what I'm saying? Even though I trusted this person, I don't know who they trust or who they don't trust. So now you got to, oh, I said I'm going to be real. This straight talk Bible study. Now you got, all right, I trust the, 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 the Jones family and, and everything. They're nice and everything and this and that. So I let my child go over there. And then, but then the Jones, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, they've got a, a, a cousin that, that cuss all the time. Just cuss all the time, don't care what nobody says and he, this and that and everything. And then, uh, but they let him come in the house and he does that. He does it all the time. Now my child comes home with a cuss spirit on him. Just want to cuss all the time. You know what? We are responsible for where our children go and what they hear. Amen. So let's guard our hearts and not only guard your heart, but guard your children's heart until they're grown enough or to an age where they can guard their own. Amen. You've got to guard your heart. You've got to guard your heart. Now, let's get into a couple of notes here and uh, and, uh, and and move through this. Listen to this. Every day your heart beats 100,000 times every day. Every day your heart has pumped 2000 gallons of blood. <laughs> wow. Through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. Your heart has did that. And watch this. Your heart is only about the size of your fist. Mm. And it's only eight to 10 ounces heavy in weight. Did you know that heart disease is the number one killer in America? Mm -hmm. Not cancer, but heart disease. Do you know the most, this is the most prevalent or the most times that someone has a heart attack on Monday mornings. I did not know that. Monday mornings. Do you know why it's on Monday mornings? Stress. Exactly. Stress. They are, people are lying in the bed 
on Sunday night saying, oh my God, I got to get up and go to work in the morning. Oh my God. And I mean, you know, and then the next thing you know, on Monday morning, they're like, oh God, I got to get up and go to this job. And they're stressed before they even get to the job. And this is so funny. One time, I was uh, I was so I was so kind of stressed about going to getting going to work one morning, and uh, and I was like, man, I hate to go. Oh, oh. and then f- when I got there, found out that uh, something had happened in the building was shut down. <laughs> Some chemicals or something had uh, had exploded or something, and I didn't have to go to. And I, I man, I turned around, went right back to the Waffle House, and sat and had a good time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just that quickly, just that quick. The stress was gone. When I saw all the ambulances out there and, and, the, and the fire trucks and everything, and they said, go back home, I said, I'll see y'all later. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And I just went to the office. That, that stress level went down from here all the way to here. Did you know that you can, listen to this, this is very good. I'm going somewhere with this. Did you know that by laughing every now and then that you can cut your stress level and you can cut the you can increase your blood flow 20 percent if you just laugh a lot just laugh it is research shows that if you laugh a lot that your blood flow will increase 20 percent i did my research found all of that found it all out mm-hmm well, this now I'm talking about the same, and I, there is a correlation between the physical heart and the spiritual heart. Watch this. The same thing with your spiritual heart. If you don't exercise and eat right and put all of that junk into your system, it will slow down the flow of your heart, the blood flow of your heart. Well, guess what? If you don't guard your heart, your spiritual heart, and not allow all kinds of grease and fat, junk food, sugar, dyes, uh, uh, um, um, uh, all of this stuff. If you don't allow that to get into your heart, because these are the two main gates. If you don't allow that to get to your spiritual heart, you can be a healthy person. It's a lot of folks out there that may not be as, as healthy physically, but they're healthy spiritually. And it's a lot of people out there that may not be spiritually healthy. Or they may be spiritually healthy, but they are physically out of shape. Amen. So you've got to guard your heart. Somebody said, I said something the other day. I said this. I said it was, it's amazing how, you know, some things are not a sin. You know, the Bible says uh, every weight and sin that so easily beset you says get it, get rid of it, throw it off. There's a difference between a weight and a sin. A sin is what God told you not to do. But a weight is something that keeps you from doing what God told you to do. Not necessarily a sin, but it's a weight. Let me just be honest with you. Let me just kind of kind of hip you out a little bit. Uh, smokers, people that smoke a lot. I I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say so much that it's a sin, but watch this. Here's what I would say. I would say that you you can still go to heaven and be a smoker, but you might get there quicker than if you wasn't a smoker. You you see what I'm saying? So some things, you know, is is that if the devil can't get you to sin, what he'll try to do is to get you to uh, to, to, to not do the things of God. You know, if he can't introduce you to sin, then he'll introduce you to the weight that makes you want to sin. Amen. Okay, let's get back in. Let's get back in here. You got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart. You can't let any and everything inside of your heart. If you don't guard your spiritual heart, you could have a spiritual heart attack. If you don't guard your spiritual heart, just like you, you guard your your physical heart. If you don't guard your heart, you could have a spiritual heart attack. Oh, man, I think it was uh, LeBron, Bronny James just this week. He had a um, his son. Yeah, Bronny. He had a he had cardiac arrest. And and this guy. Yeah, just heart just stopped. And this guy is in. He's a he's a teenager for crying out loud. 18 or 19 years old. He's a teenager and his heart stopped. 
Church, do you know that there is, we can actually be in shape and everything and our spiritual heart stops. Our spiritual heart, we can be out there going about our business and our spiritual heart just stops. Because, and I'm going to say this, because we do not take care of it or we don't guard it. We allow things to get in it and it has to beat even harder to get the blood flow out. We've got to be careful about our hearts. You got to guard it. Don't just let it see. Don't just let anything get into your heart. There are two main entrances, but it's not the only entrance. And that goes to the heart. And that's the ears and the eyes. Watch what you see. Watch what you hear. He says, above all things. I like that. He says, above all things, guard your heart. He says, above your job, guard your heart. Above your, your uh, family, guard your heart. Above your church, guard your heart. Guard your heart above every, everything. Guarding your heart is more important than anything. It's more important than your job, your career. It's more important than uh, what school you, you decide to uh, attend. It's more important than what church you decide to attend because you can get some, you, you, watch this, you can, get, you can go to the wrong church and get some, uh, some bad stuff in your spirit. So you gotta be careful. Watch what goes into your ear gate and your eye gate. Watch what goes in your ear gate and your eye gate. Amen? What goes in your heart will eventually affect everything around you. What, go what goes on in your heart will eventually affect everything around you. Let me, let me share with you what I mean by that. You can, I can sit down here and I can talk to you and I can tell you exactly whether you've been reading the Bible or whether you've been reading the newspaper. I can sit here and I can listen to you and I can tell you where you who's been in your ear and who hasn't been in your ear. You know why? Because it's going to come out of the heart. It's going to come out of the heart. And do you know there's this is so funny. Some people quote scriptures all day long. It might be the same scriptures, in there, but some people will quote scriptures all day long because they have been reading scriptures all day long. But then there, come, there comes balance. You got to have balance. Balance in life. Don't, everybody don't want to hear scriptures all day. They, they want to see how you're living. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to say that again. A lot of people are not interested in how many scriptures you know. They want to know how many scriptures are you living. Amen. So you got to guard your heart. Don't try to put on a facade or anything to make it look like you're this super spiritual Christian, but live it. Walk in it and people will follow you. Amen. Amen. So you got to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. What goes into your heart will eventually affect everything around you. Everything around you. You can't tell me that you never cussed when all you hear is cussing all the time. You know, you can't tell me that. I, I won't believe it. You're around people that cuss all day long, every day, all day, 24 hours, boom, boom. You cannot tell me you haven't cussed. Amen. You can't tell me that you never lied when you're around people that lie all the time. Your mama lied. Your daddy lied. Everybody lied in the house. And you can't tell me that you never lied. You know why I know that? Because what goes into your ears, what goes into your eyes, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. That's what's going to affect your atmosphere. Amen. You can't tell me you never stole anything. When everybody in the house has been to jail for stealing. I mean, they just, uh, you, you know, I mean, you, some of them come to, come to your house and you don't really want them in there. You tell them, they say, I got to use the bathroom. You tell them you clap all the way to the bathroom. If you stop clapping, I'm coming in. I'm coming in. So, <laughs> you, I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? So many people uh, uh, that, that, that because that's what they've been around. Now they're affected by that. And now their heart has been filled so to the point that now they're doing what they have seen. Amen. Amen. This these guys going out here, these these terrorists, I mean, these um, uh, uh, people uh, that's going around shooting up the place and, and, and killing all people and everything. You can't tell me they just woke up one day and decided to go kill somebody. No, this is something that was gradually dripping into their hearts. 
It was dripping into their hearts. How was it dripping, dripping into their hearts? It was dripping in their hearts through their ears. It was dripping into their hearts through their eyes. And now that their heart has been filled, now flows the issues of life. Now they go out and they do all of this shooting and everything. That's why when the police finally catch somebody that does something like that, they look back at his history. They look back at what he's done. They look back at what he studied. They look back at what he's been reading. Be, they, they take out the, 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 computer. yeah, the computers and stuff because that'll tell you what's in their heart. And they've been doing this for 15 years. And so finally now they decided to let it out. So what goes into your eyes, what goes into your ears will eventually get into your heart. And then it will, once that heart is filled, then it will start, you'll start acting out on what you've been listening to. Amen. Above all things, guard it, guard it, guard it. You got to guard it. Stop watching movies that promote violence. Let me say that again. Stop watching movies. Stop watching movies that promotes violence. So that's the reason some of y'all want to fight all the time, because all you're doing is watching movies where people are fighting all the time. Oh, man, it's amazing to me how you can see uh, on Facebook or TikTok or whatever. First time somebody uh, gets ready to start fighting, they got the phones out. They got the phones out. And then when somebody finds out that there's a, a, a real fight or anything, they're going to that page just to find out. Where, now, the next thing you know, you're wondering why you want to fight. You've got to be careful about the things that goes into your ears and goes into your eyes because eventually it will come out of you. It'll come out of you. You'll start acting like you have been watching or acting about what you've been hearing. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Stop watching violent movies. Stop watching violent movies. What goes on or what goes into the eyes will eventually come out of your heart. Deuteronomy chapter six and verse five says this. It says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Why didn't it say love the Lord thy God with all of your brain? Because people can act like they love God. The Pharisees did it. The Sadducees did it. They can act like they love God. They had all of the godly stuff coming out of their mouths. But they didn't know how to act like it because you know why? Because they had been taught traditionally how to be formerly or form, you know, acting like acting like Christians. But watch this. You've got to be careful that you don't act like Christians. You've got to be Christians. You've got to be Christians. You can't act like it. You can't be the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of this. You know, you got you got to act like it. You can't just say it. So that's why he says that. This is why he says this. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy heart, not their mind, but their heart. And then in first Samuel, chapter six and verse 17. Remember when when the prophet went to find uh, David to anoint him to be the next king? This is what he says. He says that man looketh on the outer appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Man to man, you know, Saul looked like the king. The Bible says he was head and shoulders over everybody else. But watch this. God said that wasn't the king, but they wanted him anyway. So they got him as a king. So when they went down to anoint David to be the king, they thought he's supposed to be like Saul, big, tall and, and all of that other stuff. But watch this. He said, God said, man looketh on the outer appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Amen. Why, how do I know that man looks on the outer appearance? And here's the here's the evidence and the proof of man looking on the outer appearance and God looking on the heart. Remember when Jonathan, when, when um, Goliath came up against the armies of Israel, the Bible says he was, it, it estimated him over nine feet tall. He was a warrior from the beginning. Now, this guy was big. Goliath was big. He was a giant. But Saul was big too. Remember, he was head and shoulders over the rest of the crowd. But watch this. Saul didn't have the heart. Saul only had the looks. But David had the heart. As a matter of a fact, 
you got to read your Bible, man. I'm telling you, it's some funny stuff in there too. It's, it's not just serious stuff, but it's some funny stuff in there too. Watch this. The Bible says that Saul would not fight uh, Goliath, but David said, let me have him. Let me have him. Watch this. Saul didn't try to stop him. David was a little ruddy fellow. He was small, but he had a big heart. He was small. Watch this. And then this is what Saul said. He said, you go ahead and fight him. I'm going to be out here. I'm gonna, mm -mm, I ain't fighting. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> and watch this. He gave him his shield. He gave him his sword. He gave him his spear. And David said this. He says, this stuff doesn't fit me. It fits you. He said, I don't need a sword and a shield. He said, all I need is five smooth stones and a slingshot. David had the heart to be a king. Saul only had the appearance to be a king. And Saul didn't, was too scared to fight Goliath, but David not only fought him, but he killed him. Not only did he kill him, he cut his head off and went back to town with his head in his hand. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, the heart will get you ahead, man. <laughs> David got ahead in life. <laughs> David, David, David got ahead in life because David had a heart. If you have a heart, you get ahead in life. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's a good one there. I tell you, I might clone that. I might not clone it. Uh, what you call that? Um, uh, copyright that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but, um, but get ahead in life. Be like David. <laughs> Amen. And then in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart. You got to read it now. It doesn't say thinketh in his head. It says thinketh in his heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you think? How do you think in your heart? What do you feel? Do you feel like that you're, um, that you're a nobody? Or do you feel like that you are somebody? I don't know about you, but the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That makes me think that I'm a somebody. You know what I'm saying? You know, let me share something with you for a minute. I ain't going to charge you for this one here. This is a good one here. But watch this. You ever seen this guy? Uh, that uh, that uh, maybe at the mall and he had a real nice looking girlfriend and everything, but he didn't look that good. And you see, and you, you kind of look at him and say, how did he do that? You know how he did that? Because he knew who he was. Confidence, confidence, confidence look good to men, to women, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. They love a man that's confident. That's how I met my wife. I was confident. I went on over and I said, I don't care whether she turned me down or not. I'm going to speak to her. That's how I met her. I was confident. I, I, I really was. I was confident. And I went over and I spoke to her and she liked my confidence. And, that, and, the, and the rest is history. <laughs> Amen. But watch this. You've got to know who you are. It says, how a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, I thought in my heart that I looked good. I thought in my heart that I had swag. I thought in my heart that I had, I had it going on. So I said, well, let's go for it. So you, as you think in your heart, so will you be. But if you think that nobody wants me, I'm ugly, I've got a fat head, I've got long ears, I've got... No, no, no. If you think like that, you ain't going to never have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You've got to, and one of the things that a man hates, can I, let me give y'all a little tip. Y'all ready? I'm, I ain't going to charge for this, but let me give you a little tip. Watch this. A man does not like a woman that is, what is it, apologetic? That's always apologizing for a little bit of stuff and always, um, you know, uh, well, well, I'm sorry, and, 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 I, I, and, and don't have any confidence. It's whatever. I can't think of the word, but it's the op opposite of confidence. Low self-esteem. Self yeah, let's just say that. Low self-esteem. That is so such a turnoff. That is such a turnoff. Low self-esteem. But confidence, it is a turn on. I mean, man, you ain't even got to have a lot of money. If you're just confident. I seen guys in my high school, man, I went to school with, man, and, and I, I, I worked and on the weekends and got money and bought nice clothes and everything and this and that, but I didn't have the confidence. But then this guy that I went to school with, he didn't have no fine clothes, and he didn't have, but he had confidence. And this guy was short, too, and he had a tall girlfriend. And I mean, he got all the girls because he was confident. 
one day I'm going to have to preach on that confidence. That's, there's a different that confidence versus uh, low self-esteem. Amen. Let's get back in here. But watch this. It says in Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinketh in his heart. How do you think? So is he. That's how you're going to be. Verse, uh, Psalms 51 and verse 10, David said this after he had committed adultery with Bathsheba and all of this stuff and he repented. He said this. This is a good one. He said, Lord, create in me a clean heart, a clean heart. I'll tell you why he said a clean heart instead of a clean mind. He said a clean heart because in your heart, you ain't going to do it no more. But in your head, you're going to do it again. You know what? When we was younger and we was in school and we, we hit somebody or something. The teacher said, apologize to him. Tell him you're sorry. And we say, OK, I'm sorry. We weren't really sorry. It wasn't in our hearts. It was only in our heads. So we did it because the teacher said do it. So watch this. When we really, really, truly meant that we were sorry, nobody had to tell us to go and apologize. Nobody had to tell us that we were wrong. When we really, truly felt bad in our hearts, not in our heads, but in our hearts, then that's when we apologize. Amen. So he, David said, create in me, O Lord, a clean heart, because if it's a clean heart, the mind's going to follow. The mind follows the heart. You know that, right? The heart doesn't follow the mind. The mind follows the heart. And when you hear something, it goes straight to the heart. When you see something, it goes straight to the heart. And then now the body, the mind, if the mind follows the heart now, Everything's go, everything goes past the brain into the heart. Once the heart is filled, it goes to the brain. And now you don't know why you're driving to the hotel now. Now you don't know why you're cussing folks out now. Now you don't because it has gotten in through your ears and your eyes. And now it's your brain is telling you what to say and what to do. Amen. Got to get ahead in life. Let's move on. Verse. Uh, then Jeremiah said it like this. Jeremiah said, he said, you will find me when God said this in, in the book of Jeremiah. You will find me when you search with all your heart. People don't find God because they're searching with their heads. But you got to search with your heart. You got to want God. You got to cry out for God. It's got to be in your heart, man. You just can't go through the motions. It's got to be in your heart. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? You're evil. How can you? It, the Pharisees were speaking good things, but they were evil. They were doing good things, but they were evil. As a matter of fact, I think Jesus called them a generation of vipers. They were going through the motions, but they were evil. Why did he say that they were evil? Because of their hearts. Because of their hearts. You got to guard your heart. He says, the people draw, um, in uh, Matthew 12 and 34, it says, O generation of vipers. He says, how can you, being evil, speak good things? How are you going to be muddy, but you, you speak in clear, clean water? Bitter and sweet can't come out the same faucet. He says, for out of the abundance of the heart. Abundance means it's filled. That's what abundance means. It doesn't mean it's halfway there. It means it's filled. Now it's starting to run over. My grandmother used to, we used to eat tea. I'm getting ready to close. We drink, uh, we used to drink tea. And uh, I don't know if some of you older people, you probably still do it and everything. But what, what she had was a teacup and she had a saucer on the teacup. And when she pour her, her, her coffee in there, she would pour it all the way to the rim till it was almost feel pretty much to the top. So if she got it and she started drinking it, it was so filled that some of it would waste in the in the saucer. The cup was filled to its abundancy. That's when it started to fall off on the saucer. When your heart is filled in abundance, then once God takes a sip of you, come on, somebody, then the saucer, which is people around you, will start to see the goodness of Jesus. 
When people, when you start because your heart is filled, now people are going to start seeing the overflow. Mm. And it's the same thing as when you're doing evil. He, once your heart is filled, you're going to start doing evil stuff to the point that people are going to start seeing it. Another verse in uh, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8, it says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. They go through the motions. They know how to pray. They get down there on that chair and they know how to pray at the church. It says, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths and honoreth me with their lips. But, how many know when you see the word but, that means forget everything you just heard. But means everything that you just heard. You can keep it, but that the main thing is what I'm about to say. Whenever you see but in a sentence, the most important part of the sentence is after but, not before but. Because it can say it's, it's raining outside, but it's getting ready to snow. Forget about the rain. It's getting ready to snow. Okay? Watch this. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to read that again. It says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. They got the mouth. They, they talking. They doing, doing all the right things. But their hearts are far from me. They talking right. They walking right. Acting right and everything. But their hearts ain't with them. Their hearts are not with God. Amen. So anything after but. That's what you need to hear. Don't hear the before the but. Listen to after the but. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says this also. It says set your affections or your heart. Set your heart on things that are above. Don't set them on things that are here on earth. Don't set your hearts on your houses or your cars or your career, but set your hearts on things that are above. I love this Pastor Booker. He used to sing this heart. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Not things here on the earth, but things in heaven, things that are eternal. Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 32, it says all believers were with one heart. They were with one heart. Everybody had the same heart. When we're all on the same page with the same heart, then we can move some mountains. Amen. We can move some mountains. But let me share something with you about that. Did you know that even when it's evil, that to a certain extent, to a certain point, that nothing can be restrained as well when people put their hearts together? Can I prove it? In the book, uh, in the Bible, it, says, it talks about the, 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 the children were trying to build a, the, the Tower of Babel. And I'm going to tell you why it was called the Tower of Babel. And so they were saying they were working together with one heart. And Jesus, the Bible says God came down and took a look. They were trying to build a tower to heaven. They was going to wind up killing themselves. They were trying to build a tower to heaven. God came down and he said, uh-uh, no. He says, watch this, and this is so powerful. He says, because they, of, are, they are of one heart or one mind, he says, nothing can be restrained from them. What does that mean? Even when you're doing wrong, if you get enough people, you got some power. Now, it ain't going to last, but you got some power. Man, I look at all, I look, and I hate to, I hate to say this, but I'm going to just say it. It is what it is. I looked at the, you know, a couple years ago at the presidential election and everything, and all of these people got together and, and everything, and they went, all of them, it seemed like everybody, the majority of the people went to the, to the left. And it was like, but because it was more of them, than it was the people that really wanted things to work out right, they won because they were of one heart. Okay, let me move on. Let me move on. I can tell you where you stand by listening to the words that comes out of your mouth. You can say this and say that, but what comes out of your mouth, I can tell. I can tell. Guard what you see, hear, even what you smell. Now, somebody said, wait a minute. Now, Pastor Dennis, guard what you smell. Yes, guard what you smell. Because the enemy, I, I know this is too, this is a little deep for some people. But the enemy, listen, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. The enemy uses your five senses to get you to do wrong. 
I'm going to let that think, let that meditate, let you meditate on that for just a second. The enemy comes to throw you off track by your five senses. You're smelling, you're hearing, you're seeing, you're touching, and what's the other one? And you're tasting. Let me share with you what I mean by that. You can, you can stop smoking weed, been done for 15 years, I ain't smoked none for 15 years, and all of a sudden you'll smell it. And the devil starts to remind you about when you used to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know I'm telling the truth here. I know I'm telling the truth. Through your five senses, the devil tries to get you back into the life that you came out of or into a life of sin. So hearing, seeing, even smelling, the enemy can use that. Mm -hmm. Can I go deeper? Touching mm -hmm. is a feeling. It's one of the five senses. Mm -hmm. Some people have been sleeping with a woman or a man for so long that they can't go to bed without touching. Got to have somebody in the bed to touch. Now that Y'all not married anymore. Now you still got to feel that person. Or you got to feel a person. The enemy uses your five senses. Your five senses. Okay, let me go one more. One more. One more. Your five senses. If you used to drink alcohol like nobody's business, they had to pick you up off the floor. Everywhere you went, they said, don't give him nothing to drink. You hear, there you go. He's on the floor. Sleep. He just drinks till he just throws up and everything. Then so finally he gets delivered. Now he takes, uh, he has a, uh, uh, he has, he drinks something that tastes like it had liquor in it, but it didn't. And he's like, ooh, ooh. The devil uses that to remind you of how you used to drink. It's a taste. So therefore, the devil uses the five senses to pull you back into what you come out of or to pull you into what you should have never been in. Amen. OK. All right. Let's get ready to shut it down. I got a couple more things and then we'll shut it down. Man, this is good, man. <laughs> this is good. I'm telling you, y'all better play this back. Tell somebody, listen to this. This is good. Talking about guarding your heart. Guarding your heart. This is good. This is good. Okay. Um, guard what you see. Guard what you hear. God, even guard what you smell. Parents, you can't let your children go again. You can't let your children go and spend the night with just anybody because who you trust, they may not trust. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and here's I'm going to share something else with you, too. I can't watch scary movies. Somebody said, oh, I heard a man back there in the background say, oh, man, you just a little wimp or something. No, I ain't no wimp. I just don't like I don't like scary movies. And I'll tell you why I don't like scary movies is because it'll get in your spirit. The Bible says God did not give us a spirit of fear. I don't want to be fearing. I don't want no. I don't know. Every time you just jumping in the bed, jumping. I mean, you hear something outside and next thing you know, you dial a 911 or, or you shoot and shot up the house because you just scared. You ain't even seen nobody. You just go pow, pow, pow. But, you know, I mean, come on. I can't let fear get into my spirit because it's when I'm walking in fear. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you walk in fear, you cancel faith. When you walk in fear, you cancel faith. I'm going to say that again. When you walk in fear, you are canceling out faith. Faith is basically the opposite of fear. When Jesus walked on water, he did not have fear. He had what? Faith. 
You cannot allow fear into your heart because you'll wind up not being able to walk on water. But if you've got faith in your heart, you can walk on water. I ain't got time. No, we was just talking at work just the other day about the new movie just came out. I don't know. Something. And they asked me, they said, Steve, you don't watch scary movies. I said, nope. I said, you know, last scary movie I watched Friday the 13th. And I think it was the first one, the first one, even the one where that just came out with the uh, uh, not and uh, the Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis was in. I, I said, I don't care. I ain't watching that because I don't want to allow fear to come. I don't watch scary movies. I, I barely do suspense. <laughs> wow. No, I don't let that. I don't let that get in my spirit. Then the next thing you know, your car stop on you in the middle of the night. And uh, and you next thing you know, you just done panicked and done freaked out because you scared to get out. The car. Oh, Lord, what is that over there chirping? It, all it is, it's a cricket. You over there, man. No, I ain't got time for fear. I don't have time for fear. Amen. You know what? I'll tell you another thing, too. Can you, you ready for this one? Stop watching movies and documentaries on things that are not godly. Okay, let me, let me see if I can break it down to you a little bit. Um, I used to love cheaters. Y'all know where I'm going with this, don't you? I used to watch cheaters. Loved it. I saw it one time, this guy, he was coming out of the store and his wife with his girlfriend and his wife walked up on him and he said, whoa, he turned around and went right back in. And she said, uh-uh, come out here. And then she was about ready to fight him and everything. And then she said, um, she said, who is this? And, uh, and he said something and he said, uh, I saw you the other night. He said, oh, that was my twin brother. She said, you ain't got no twin brother. Oh my goodness. It was hilarious. It was funny. Uh, I've seen people get sprayed, sprayed with the garden hose and the, and the fire, everything. I've seen everything like that. But I had, God told me, you got to stop watching that stuff because it opened doors to be a cheater. Amen. I had to stop watching it. Can, can, I, can I bring it home one more time? Sweetie, can I bring it home one more time? Yeah, she says, oh, Lord. Yes, I'm going to say it. You got to watch. Stop all of this housewife watching stuff, too. And uh, reality TV and all of that stuff, too, because it, it teach you how to cuss. It teach you how to lie. It teach you how to fight. It teach you all of that stuff. You got to stop in allowing stuff like that to get in your system. Because once your heart has been filled, now you know how to fight. You know where the pistol at. You know where the knife at. You know where the gun at. You know where all of that stuff is because you don't watched it. And now you didn't even played it back in your head. If he do come in here smelling like another woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me go on. Let me move on. Let me move on. All right. There are things in your heart right now that you do and you don't even know why you do them. There's things in your heart right now that you do and you don't know why you do them. You know why? You saw your parents do it. When you were little, you saw uh, the grownups do it. You saw other people do it when you was little. And now you want to do them. And you don't even know why you want to do them because you saw somebody else do it. And now all of a sudden your heart is feel your heart is feel. Some of you. If someone said the wrong thing to you, you already know what's going to happen. You already rehearsed it. I wish she would say something. I wish she would. I got something for her. You know why? Because you can watch so, so many of them shows that now you know how to go off on somebody. I told somebody this. I said, you know what? If I ever get in a fight, I wouldn't know how to fight. I'd probably hurt somebody real, real bad. You know why? Because I never fought before. I never fought. And, uh, and, and people that never did anything before, then they don't or never watched it or anything like that. Then they don't know how to do it. But if you've been watching that all your life, your daddy was a fighter. Your mama was a fighter. They used to fight each other. Your brothers used to fight. You just saw fighting all the time. Now all you want to do is fight. Just fight. Got a fighting spirit. That's right. You got to be careful what goes into your eyes, what goes into your ears, because it'll get in your heart and then it'll come out of you. It'll come out of you. Let me, let me finish, finish up here. Some things are good to see. You see it in your eyes. 
You hear it in your ears. Some things are good. That's why I like sometimes National Geographic. That's why I like shows like that, because it teaches me some things. When a man goes out and he get bit by a snake and he dies, I ain't going out and fooling around with no snakes. Thank you for being a sacrifice. I ain't doing it. If somebody goes out and they get attacked by a shark, guess what? When I go to the beach, I'm just going to the water that's about that deep. I'm not going way out there. If a shark going to come get me, he's going to have to come in, up on the shore and get me. You know why? Because I've seen so many shark attacks. So some things are good to see so that you don't do them. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, 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 um, uh, a bear. You know, <laughs> I was finna say something, baby, but that, I can't say that because we got everybody watching. And there's some people that can't, can't take this, but I'm going to just say it like this. Uh, I'm not going to get bit by a bear. I'm not going to get mauled by a bear. You know why? Unless the bear come up here to Fayette County and he's just out in the street, just walking the streets and he see me before I see him. Now, nah, I ain't getting bit by, I ain't getting mauled by no bear. You know why? Because I have seen other folks get mauled by bears and I ain't getting mauled by no bear. I ain't going to, if I see a bear, I ain't even going to work that day. I'm going to just be in the house locked, got everything locked up with my gun, and I'm going to be calling 911 animal control or something. Y'all got to come get this thing because I ain't, gonna, I ain't coming out the house. Sticking your head out the door. Who are you out there? What are you doing? It's a bear. I wonder, can I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me finish up. Let me finish up. Guard what goes into your eyes and guard what goes into your ears because it will get into your heart. And once it gets into your heart, then there it is. Then you'll start seeing stuff coming out that you never thought would have came out. You ever heard the phrase, I didn't know that was in me? You've been watching folks that it was in. Mm -hmm. And it start getting into you. Amen. Listen, I hope this message bless you tonight. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. You've got to guard your heart. You can't let all of that mess get in there. You can't let all of that stuff that will turn you around and, 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 and put you back out in the streets like that. Uh -uh. You got to guard your heart. Amen. Guard your heart, guard your ears, guard your eyes. Don't allow anything to get into your heart that will push you back out into the world. Guard your heart. Amen. Listen, I hope this message was a blessing to you tonight. I pray that it would it bless your socks off. Um, I would love to see you. I would love to see you. Some of these Sunday mornings when you don't have a place to go and worship, come on out and worship with us. Uh, I, I think that you'll really, really have a good time. Amen. I think that it, 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 it'll bless you, man. We are the church that loves, man. We love everybody. And, and people come through the door and they said, I just love your, the presence. I, I love how you guys love on people when they come in the door. And man, I got that. Just the other Sunday. And I said, wow, now we're on the right track. So, so just come on out. We, our services start at 10 a.m. We would love to have you. We'd love for you to come and hang out with us. It starts at 10 a.m. And guess what? Next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, that's August the 6th. We are having our homecoming. Oh, I guarantee you, you're going to love it, man. It's going to, that's the 7th. Yeah, it's the 6th. I thought it was the 6th. Yeah, it's, you'll love it. I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's going to start at 1 p.m. And, um, and I think you're going to really love it. And, and uh, dinner will be served as well. So come on out and fellowship with us on uh, August the 6th. Um, at Ebenezer. Our address is 1927 Highway 154, Sharpsburg, Georgia, 30277. You will love to be there, I guarantee you. So come on out, hang out with us. Listen, thank you for joining us for Straight Talk Bible Study tonight. We pray that this, mu this message was a blessing. Amen. So God bless you. We love you and enjoy the rest of your week on purpose. And remember, guard your heart. Guard your heart. I'll see you soon. Have a good night.